Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Side Escape Gaming Podcast. My name is Jake Burke, and I am joined, as always, by James St. Charles for the sixth time, I think, now. We're on episode six? Five? Oh, I hope so. I hope it's six. Ooh, no, I think it's five. I, I think it's five. It's five. Oh, oh sorry. I'm going to get it. All right. James, how are you doing today? Really good. Got uh, yeah. a lot of stuff looking forward to for the new year, Ooh. and uh, can't wait to talk about what we're talking about today. Today, big topic. We're going to be talking about the game yeah. of the decade. Starting from 2010 Huge. all the way through to 2019, because 10 years, that's how it works. Probably the um, best 10 years of gaming, as usual. Yeah, yeah right. It and then we'll say that next better. year. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so kind of like our little preamers that we've talked about with uh, our game of the decade. If it was getting an official release after 2010, it's in the conversation. It was in yep. early access beforehand, and then it got released. It's still in the conversation. It's in. Yep. So... Because I think there's a stipulation for one of the games that we'll probably talk about a lot. Yes, today. yes, sir. Um, but And we talked about a little bit, we haven't been playing anything. So there's no really, what you've been playing section of this podcast. Because of the Christmas. The holidays, and yeah, and just I've time. played about two hours of Disco Elysium, and that is it. So, hey, good game. That's More my than, update. Yep. Yep. All right. So game of the decade. I think we should just start it off with a banger. Okay, yeah. What do you what do you think? Give me give me a game of the decade. Just give me a random one. We'll kind of go back and forth. I think. Random. Yeah. Why not? N- not Maybe. a banner. Okay. Let's do let's do Skyrim. Skyrim. Oh, that is on my list as well because I think that okay, is good. that that is a staple of the decade. I'd say. Do you really... remember when it was released? Twenty eleven. November eleventh, twenty eleven. It was eleven. Oh, it was eleven. <laughs> it was baller. Yeah. 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 But also, uh, I really just... apologize for saying the word baller. <laughs> And anyways, this anyway. game came out, and uh, man, I remember playing it. I played it on Xbox, but uh, I remember just like this game is for geeks. Like I was like, mm-hmm. this game is like just for like nerds who are like really into Dungeons and Dragons. And when you start it, it's like completely like throw that out. Like to throw out like any thoughts I had about uh, Oblivion and all, all Morrowind, all those early other games. It's good. Yep. And I think. The reason why it just kind of captured everyone at this time when there wasn't really anything coming out. I mean, I saw, always saw people playing Oblivion, but it just never really had the traction that Skyrim had with right. dragons, like right right away the intro and what you can do, and it, it captured everyone. I feel like for I feel like that everyone type of that I knew that played any little video game whatsoever yeah, was playing play Skyrim. Yeah, exactly. Like, any uh, any genre, anything you were playing, you were at FPS, you were playing uh, puzzles or whatever, you got into this game. Right, and I don't think Skyrim like did the like huge change in the open world nope. genre, but but it had that the leveling system, which was fantastic. Of if you're doing something, you are increasing its level. Which my least favorite part of RPGs is like when you level up and it's like you got to put three points in heavy weapons, and then like you can't yeah. switch later on. You're like I have to be this archer from the very beginning. Um, yeah. But oh, Skyrim is one of those games that comprehensive items, builds, uh, yeah. the way you approach fights, really great stories. The way you can travel and uh, just look at the wilderness. It was really immersive for coming out in 2011. Right. And then it became kind of yeah. also meme culture of like, it, I took it, an arrow it, to the knee. It became this it, like, Yeah, the memes. Memes started with right? that. Yeah. Memes started. And then also um, like, you're just everybody hopping up a hill. Like you just stand against a mountain and you just keep pressing jump because that's like how you would get up a mountain. Like there's little yep. glitches that kind of make that game special this like this game really propelled bethesda to like the forefront although people can argue and say fallout was but fallout 3 not was probably one of their two as well but uh skyrim like ooh, just everyone wants another skyrim also yeah think about what, game of the decade or elder Scrolls. what has been released like 25 times throughout the decade if there right. is a system skyrim is on it you know if, like if there is a screen it is on it your your refrigerator <laughs> you remember the bethesda conference <laughs> yeah. where they had that joke about the smart fridge was yeah you know, skyrim on it but it's very true. Like Bethesda reached, released Skyrim like all yeah. the time. But it still pe- is great today. People may have some differing opinions about current Bethesda, but I'd say it's they're they're still the same. Yeah. Even though they've made some questionable decisions about online and their single player is at the forefront and it's great. So mm-hmm. and that game that I is think, that is a game a, of the decade. There, I feel like there's a sour taste on Skyrim now because it's been re-released all the time. But yeah, it's still the VR Skyrim. Game. I mean, yep. uh, I could, yeah. It's on Switch. That was a Switch launch game. Was just Skyrim. It's, it's pretty. It, interesting. It, it is that game, yeah. But yeah. Um, they hit no, the nail on the head, though. They did, and I think that is still. I think that is definitely a game that's in the running for 
a game of the decade kind of thing. I'm mm-hmm. circling it on my list. I circled it, but yeah, we, as, as we talk more about stuff, maybe we could. Right. Well, okay, I want to talk about another RPG that we also talked about a lot last week with top five favorite games. Mm-hmm. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Newer. Newer. Newer, yeah, yeah. So, but, but it took kind of, I think with Skyrim, you are your character. Mm-hmm. And that's the role playing is your role playing as like you in this world. Exactly. Where yeah. Witcher is almost the opposite of you are role playing as Geralt and what will Geralt do? Exactly. And also, the, you know, just the way the mechanics work of hunting monsters and leveling up. And there's just this fantastic storyline and through line through the Witcher that kind of compels you. I literally just played a few hours of it yesterday. You just out show. of the blue, no for a particular reason. Yeah, about no, what's it wasn't current, current of the show. events. I just <laughs> jumped back into it. Did <laughs> yeah. you see there's like a hundred thousand people on Steam right yeah. now? Yeah. Back that is degree. incredible. Like people watch The Witcher and they're like, oh man, I really want to go try Witcher and it's it holds up. Yep. It's it's got a they had like the Steam Awards and it has like a gold rating, mm. which is like for how many people are playing it. And it's held held gold for like ever since it was released. Like it's crazy. Three three years? <laughs> Well, and it's, one of the things that I love about The Witcher is I love Gwent, the card game in it. And yesterday Gwent I played great. some Gwent against people because it's like yeah. this meta card game inside the game that's almost too meta for the card game where like Geralt is a card. <laughs> but whatever. <Yeah>. Um, but <laughs> games yeah. inside games. It, right. it spawned a game, like a separate standalone. It was so good. Mm-hmm. That's... That's another thing I want to talk about, but just we'll talk about it later. But games spawning other games, like a game spawning yeah. a genre, right. that's a that's a big teller for a game that like when it came out spawned something. Spawn something, which and, and yeah. Skyrim. I feel like along with Skyrim, everyone played The Witcher. Like that became this huge of the generation. This is the game you play, mm. um, and it's rightfully deserved. It's great. Yes. I mean, you can talk about it. Highly recommend game. it. If no one's played this game, it is so good. And the DLC, I always tell Jake, I'm like, and all my friends, they just play the game and that's it. I'm like, the DLC is so much more to the game. Especially the I'm first excited. one. Second one is its own game. It's like that good. It's just a game with Geralt. But the first one ties in so well with the story. It is, ugh, it's superb. Best DLC of all time, I'd say. Really? Heart of Stone? Out of, out of any DLC ever released, best DLC. What about the DLC in Skyrim that you got to have children? Those DLC sucked. <laughs> no, okay, okay, so let's talk about Skyrim DLC. Skyrim DLC was just like, okay, I open up this part of the map and you can go there. It's like Fallout DLC. It's like, hey, here's the new part of the map. Just same, same old yep, thing. Same old thing. Um, no, remember the one you just got to build a house, but it was in the same location? <sighs> there was no variety to it? That was bad DLC. Yeah, um, this okay. DLC is like new game kind of thing. Going back, to, so we're talking about The Witcher and Skyrim. Obviously, Witcher is your favorite game, as we talked about yes. last week. Yeah. Do you think game of the decade wise it ranks over Skyrim? I would say no. no and, uh, and that's really hard for me to say. Yeah. But the only reason why is Skyrim was such a forefront in gaming. Mm-hmm. Came out earlier too, and it just really changed like the layout for RPGs and people. Uh, people's like. Yeah. Uh, reaction to it, and now they want it. Like now they're craving it. Like people will tell you if they would want another Witcher or another Skyrim, they would hands down take oh, another yeah. Skyrim. Well, I think for yeah. me, Skyrim is the first game, and I know there's other games yeah, before the this that did this, but like feeling a f- sense of freedom of like you get off that dragon tutorial area and you're like, you can go anywhere. Yeah. Like, you, you go, go you anywhere. You want to be a mage? Yeah. Go up north. You want to be a mage? You want to go be a pickpocket? Go left or, yeah. go, or go right. Like you can. You know, the I can exploration so- was so great and it's just yeah. like, wow. And I, at that time, I'd never played a game anything like that. But I just people, crossed of course, Witcher played 3 off my list. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna cross it off too. Yeah, uh, but I, have I, other, I have other games that are probably better. Yeah. All right. You have a, you have uh, another one you want to bring up? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're we're starting with heavy hitters. We are. So I think that's good. Let's go down the line then. Okay. Grand Theft Auto Five. It's on my list. That's a big yeah. one. That's a huge one. That <laughs> is takes open world and mm-hmm. to the next level. Yes. With what you can do? Driving, shooting. Uh, owning a house, the online aspects of it, it, it the story is pretty great. It, it's one of those; it's its own game. It, mm-hmm. you, you have no other company that's competing with Grand Theft Auto, like doing games to that scale with cities right. and. Uh, even though like RPGs have a little bit of that, it's nowhere near like modern. We'll see with Cyberpunk. I don't know. I can't say. Anything. Yeah, but uh, it's so, it's great. I am not the biggest Grand Theft Auto fan. Like I enjoy it; they're fun. They're fine to me. But I, I think there is no denying that game's 
surprising online component that took off of like that, GTA that's, yeah. online is insane. GTA online is it's how it's that company's still running probably like with with the amount of money they put into other projects, they're yeah. getting all that revenue from the GTA online, which is absolutely bonkers how people are spending money on that. But right. it's it's still, yeah. And I, I, I watch GTA. There's GTA uh, role play that is mm-hmm. really popular right now where they have servers that are like taking the game and making it their own with custom code. That's a beautiful thing with PC that you can do that. But they're using the base of GTA 5 and spawning something else right. and creating something else. Even, even those games old. No, but for the decade when it's coming out. When it came out in 2014? Or is it 14? Well, and I have it. Yeah, 2014 and you know, 2019. And, Five and years. They've it's released another game since then that has a yep. whole online component and it still yep. is. Yeah, no, yeah nowhere near it. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, it, all, uh, it definitely Rockstar. took graphic wise, I think, to the next level too of like an open world. Like, this is what a game can look like. Um, mm-hmm. Just like. The, and I think it took a new thing with Grand Theft Auto transferring characters and kind of having three playable characters like that. I don't know if GTA has done that before. I don't believe so. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. And having that kind of the world feel like lived in. And I think that's something a true testament to GTA. I mean, it's definitely one to consider. Yeah. Also, I guess we could talk about the release of how they staggered it and Mm -hmm. basically made the most profit possible with (laughs) releasing on console on the old generation, yep, because it's came out on the old generation, and then releasing to the new generation, and then releasing the PC, and yep. then it it just so great, like like marketing wise to do that and keep it fresh, keep people wanting it, but just well, how and doing, like, online wasn't true. available at launch, so it's you're like right, you're yeah, getting this for the single player, and then the online came out a few months later, and then they you know uh, and that ticks off, yeah, yeah, that's nuts, and, and then they kept updating, and they have like the high okay the heist coming out, D- okay DLC wise, never mind. This is also a great DLC. Is when they yeah. started including heist DLC, and they had the ten million dollar challenge. Okay. So you, if you completed all, I think it was all ten heists. If you complete all of them without dying with the same like four players. You receive ten million dollars in for online paying. Oh, so wow. you could buy like a million dollar car. And all, it was a lot. That, I don't know how much it is now, but it was a lot, and it was <laughs> hype around it. You'd always see everyone like trying to do ten million dollar challenge with their four man team, and them dying on one mission. Huh. Like a really, really famous clips about it. But when that came out, it was amazing. That had a lot of hype around it too. The only GTA online I ever played was you and Gunner for like an hour. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe we played a little bit. But yeah, like, yeah. We, did, we we did some heists, Gunner and I, and uh, uh, one of our friends. But uh, he yeah. uh, he's really in it because it's racing, of course. Of course. I would say Grand Theft Auto at its forefront is a racing game with shooting. Yeah. It's just an open world racing game that you can walk around and shoot. Because the racing is great. It's probably one of the best out of many recent. Maybe Forza has a little bit better, but right, yeah, really I mean, great. There's driving. so much variety of what you can do. You can play golf. Flying, good flying. Yeah, golf, yeah. yeah. You can play ping pong. Yeah. So, you can no, swim. I- you can drive a boat. Like It's just all around. You think about it and what you can do in it. And it's well, the, I, I remember I was works. reading about like when they had triathlons in game where like they had like a swim, bike, run course. Yes, like, yeah. And had like 100 people those. competing. And I was like, that's insane. Yeah, they have they yeah. have those and it's so funny, really fun stuff. Yeah, no, I definitely think that's definitely high up on the list of something to consider. I want to yeah. throw out, kind of talking about GTA Five, Red Dead Redemption One, yes, and slash or Red Dead Redemption Two. Let me ask you this. Yeah, what do you think is better? In my opinion, Two. Okay, but I know that is it the, because it's newer. No, I think because Two did something very different than One. I think one is a much more like, in my opinion, um, like a linear progression through a story, which is still yep. really good in that Western setting. Yeah. But you're John Marston and you're not really like feeling a part of it, in my opinion. Um, and you're kind of coming in the middle of a story. Like you're right. You, yeah. Where I think in two, you are like kind of taking Arthur Morgan, but then like becoming your own Arthur Morgan. It's one of my favorite games of all time, just because of this, like the mustache thing, right? I talk about this for like, I played the game where I grew out the grossest, most disgusting mustache on Arthur Morgan (laughs) and I never shaved it. And like, that was my goal. Um, And then seeing like commercials for the game, because they were everywhere. You'd see like Arthur Morgan clean shaven. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's another like Arthur, but he's not mine because mine had this mustache. And the way that they made facial hair, the your character is really interesting. (laughs) Um, And I really felt attachment to like my Arthur and kind of his journey. And I think I'm, my opinion, the journey is a little more fascinating of him starting out as kind of, he's not a good man, 
but realizing that there are worse men than he is and kind of trying to fit in that world. Um, but yeah. you could argue one influence two and you know. Yeah, but then it, it is a great sequel. If you're saying two is better than one, then it's just a testament to a great game. Yeah. But also, how do you feel about the game of the year aspect with it? It came out with a lot of heavy hitters, like God so, of War. And I always think like the way that I love God of War as well, which is we should just yep. jump into that after this. Um, yep. Red Dead was my game of the year, but I think God of War was the game of the year. Like I think God of I War, agree. hands down, yeah. is better than it but i personally fell more in love with red dead yeah i Um, i I could i could tell people were like on the fence between both uh but to me god of war even though uh, some people could say it's simpler it did things better way better i say it's with story i think too i think god of war is a game that you would show someone and be like this is what video games are now i look at this we're like red dead is like slow and methodical and you gotta walk everywhere and and like that's not for everybody um It's like how Death Stranding, which is not even on this list for me, but Same that's a game like that's really not for everyone. Like it's very unique and different and weird and like I think Red Dead has a lot of those, Red Dead Two has a lot of those similar attributes, but I think Red Dead One is a little more for everyone. Okay, I that think that. Yeah, yeah, that does that doesn't make a little sense. So not, neither no. of them I think compare to G- GTA Five though in the broader schemes. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't have much else to say. Did you play too? I did. I'm played too. I want to play it on PC because I, I was basically waiting for the PC again. Rockstar famous, staggering their releases, eh, releases on Epic yet. Game Store and their own store on, and then they release on Steam. So Is now, it out like, on Steam? There are some issues. I, I didn't want to buy it at first because there's like some issues with the gotcha. uh, integration. So I'm waiting for that to all be sorted out between Steam and the Rockstar client. And mm. so once that's all sorted, I'll probably. I'll definitely pick it up and play. Great. It's so beautiful yeah. too. That game is yeah. gorgeous looking. But again, they're keeping it relevant, keeping it going. Mm-hmm. That's that's a good that's a good marketing thing. Yeah, they know they have um, a good marketing team at Rockstar. Yeah, I I mean I've seen some some gameplay of it. It's it's great, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't have much to say, so I can't tell you if it's definitely a game of the decade, but You're right. let's go into let's go into God of War. God of War. Have you played yeah. God of War twenty eighteen? A little bit. I have a, like. Okay. I have. A, I, I played it something. Like. So you have sea legs for it. And you know how it feels. Yeah, I've seen you play it too. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I can't remember. God of War. I think um, has I think to be a consideration. Story wise, it's incredible. And gameplay wise, that game is fun to play. Yeah. Oh yeah. They, game, they they spent. I mean, to me, watching the the God of War documentary. Yep. Uh, do you remember what it's called? No, shit, what is yeah. it called? <laughs> Anyways, the God of War. Doc of War. No, it's not called that. But <laughs> watch the God of War behind the scenes documentary, basically mm-hmm. of them creating the game. Uh, it's on PlayStation's YouTube, I think. Yeah. At one of the best game documentaries ever, mm-hmm. showing the struggle of a tr- how to make a AAA game, and especially with a small studio, kind of like that small in the sense that it's a very tight knit. Yeah. Making this game spending so much time making the game and justifying the resources to it. It's, it's beautiful. And you have Corey just like really like yeah, stress, but making things perfect. And uh, really, I think it, anyone who's uh, like wants to aspire to be a game developer or a programmer needs to watch this documentary to like right. show what it's about. It's grueling work, but it's a passion work to make a great game. Mm-hmm. And so well, and that, I think too- that in itself is great. Nothing compares to throwing the axe and recalling it like the hammer, like Thor, and just like that kukush feeling. Is like they spent so much time to work with the combat, and the people were uh-huh. talking about like they love that. That's just that's what makes your game. Is if you're ninety percent of the time like going to use a system, you yeah. got to make sure it's great. Well, like, I think God of War has season. that single player aspect of like story. Like the story <laughs> is amazing throughout. Obviously, you, yeah. you play as Kratos, which. They took Kratos, who is arguably one of the worst video game characters of like this Greek <laughs> god yeah. that just like loved to fuck people and he like, killed fuck my and family. Fuck and kill and, all like, the gods. <laughs> I hate you. And like he was only about anger. And they took a character like that and made him like have emotional depth and like, but not yeah. not by changing him, having that reflect his past and then like creating a new character through but, that by making him have a son. Yeah, um, and Corey, Corey would say that was reflecting himself. Yeah, in as, in as the as documentary, a yeah, like he was like as become a father, like it really like reflected himself, and that's. That's beautiful thing when your your games reflecting your life and yep. you can show that it man you have a great time in that game with your son and 
in, interacting with the environment and trying to like basically learn mm-hmm. uh, and, and like then the happened. combat also like you're saying reinforces it's fun to play it's engaging and beautiful looking and then there's also a sense of scale and scope and different environments and you know there's one section where you are literally climbing like a giant's skeleton that like died and the whole like area is this giant's like corpse that you're like going in and out of and it's spectacular and of scale course, and scale that's okay that's that's yeah i do want to talk about the scale yeah in these games like god of war oh, man i'm trying to think of the other game that came out on playstation that has like just giant monsters oh horizon zero dawn horizon zero dawn another one yep. it is done so beautifully and it's you can have something like giant and have it look trash it looks amazing though mm-hmm. it you take time with the scale and perspective and have the impact of it it's it's beautiful well, I had one thing that I don't think gets talked about enough anymore was God of War is all one shot. Where the whole game is one shot on Kratos. And it never cuts, even in cutscenes, it never blinks away or does anything. And that's pretty crazy, to, yeah, technically. To have that keep going. Yeah, to never like fade to black and then start a cutscene. Like You're always in it. It's generate yeah, with it, yeah. Yeah. That is... And really I think, great. obviously, we're seeing that a lot more in games nowadays, like... It's, you know, it doesn't do the old school fade to black come up and it's yeah, a cutscene. Yeah, fade to black. Kind of here's my preloaded cutscene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all in game generation, which Grant thought I was doing that as well. Yep. GTA Five. Yep. GTA so. Five. And then yeah. So does that deserve a circle or a cross out? I think God of War compared to GTA Five and Skyrim is that even even near those two? To me, like when I let me ask your opinion on the original God of War series. You play? You play any of the? Original, uh, yeah, I played any, any of them. Two and three. Yeah, I probably played a little bit of them, some of them on PlayStation. I came out. I played two. I didn't play three. Okay. But uh, to me, those games are just like, yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's just a hit around. Like, no, no attachment whatsoever. It's just like, you know, playing through, grinding. Yeah. Oh, this is fun. This one, I felt like people just really like gravitated towards with a good story. Oh my gosh, it's Kratos like a, it's is one a, of my favorite characters now. After it, it. it's a passion game. I'd say mm-hmm. GTA Five is not that though. Even mm-hmm. though it's a great game, it is not a passion game. And I don't. I can think it's up there for game of the decade just because it takes this series and really propels Revamps it to the it. next level yeah yeah it's not a new game per se and grand thought it was just uses the same formula over and over again and just makes it better right so um okay i've circled it i think we'll, we'll i think it could be up it. there yeah we yeah, yeah we need to revisit all yeah all right i'm gonna throw one out there yeah the last of us last of 2013 us? it's my favorite game of all time yeah I'll, I'll die on a hill saying that's one of the games of the decade um, I, I, think I, I would I would actually put that above most. You don't get God of War without The Last of Us. You don't get most games. La- and the thing is, Last of Us is its own genre. It's not spawning off another genre. It's a new thing. Yeah, it's like a stealthy kind of it's, third-person it's own thing. game. And yeah. I, I think that became like the first, in my opinion, like really like a great video game story that you can show someone that loves movies and they kind of get why people love games. Okay. Like, you know, I think like, there are a lot of great stories that have come before The Last of Us, mm-hmm. but I don't think they would fit like a modern audience very well. Where it's like maybe Final Fantasy VII might be a little obtuse because of the mechanics and the RPG elements, and like, but there's still a great yeah. story there. Where I think you show some of The Last of Us, um, I you know, my girlfriend Maddie, I showed her The Last of Us, and I was like, in order to really date me, you gotta you gotta sit through us playing The Last of Us because it's that important to me. And we played through all of it, and she was like, a few parts like got her, and like obviously the beginning. Which yes, is yeah. insanely sad. How did she take the end? She was super conflicted. Oh. It's... Which was really cool. Like, didn't know yeah. if Joel's choice was right or not. And that was really fun to talk about with her. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because, you, you know, it's that, that instance, obviously, I don't want to spoil the choice, but there is a big moment where it's like, people say, Joel's the bad guy. And it's like, is yeah. he really the bad guy? Or like, and I think that's a, gr- to have a game give that kind of question. Yeah, good philosophical powerful. depth. Yeah. To it. And I love games that, that dive into that and, and I don't really think, make you think. And yeah. I don't think the gameplay is incredibly, like, outstandingly strong. It's good enough, and it services the story and the characters. Mm-hmm. But it, I think the story itself propelled it and really made video game stories stand I think out. As, as art, as uh, music and mm-hmm. game direction, it is hands down probably game of the decade i, I would say it's up oh, there it's up there okay yeah i'm circling it, it, we'll, we'll it come can, back it can really. be close there yeah. is something about that game especially when two comes out it might even be better and probably we'll i'm see. gonna assume it's gonna be better but we'll um, see. yeah we'll see 
because that that first game it just like really hits you. You're like, oh man. Yeah. And you see it on everyone's top list. It's it's always there at the top. It's great, and the or characters are to. insane. Um. Yeah. Okay. You want to move to one next one? What do you? Yeah. Got? Do you want? You want me to? Let me talk. Overwatch. Oh, that's on my list too. That's a big game. Yeah. Overwatch is a huge game that's really not doing anything different because people would say, oh, TF2 came out. Right. And that, like, it's just TF2. But it did. Mm-hmm. It came out with, like, a lovable characters that you can really attach to. And game. it's unlike any other game you play. And even though people say it's all oh, it's TF2, no, it, it is completely right. different with the team comps and the strategy and what each character does, and the animations that are spawned by Blizzard that did it, like, the stories, oh, that Bastion story gets me, like, every single time. I know. So good. And to have that aspect, even though people are, like, they come out of the Overwatch 2, and it's just, like, it's basically just DLC, it's good that this is mm-hmm. happening to a game. I think when you have, like, story and attachment, it's a great game. It's one of the best multiplayer games of the decade. I would agree. Really I, great. Yep. I think, too, Overwatch is complex, yet mm-hmm. simple. Where I think, like, yes, exactly. You can get it. You go, oh, I got to get to that control point you in can, the center. You can get into it. Mm-hmm. Whether or not you can be really good at it, that takes practice. Right. And it, it's Super, what it, Sma- it's super yeah. Smash Bros. Where Super Smash yes, Bros. is yeah. simple on the like the outside. It's like, okay, I just got a few buttons. And then there's really complexity to it. And Overwatch, yeah. I think, is the same thing. Where it's like, you know. Positions, when to use your ult, yeah. uh, how to help your teammates, the healing. It is ingrained in teamwork. It's not a solo effort. Right. But it, uh, it's beautiful. Well, and I so, think too, for, I, that when that came out, it was like, wow, this game's amazing. And it still is. It's still relevant today. And I mean, yeah. the pro league is, is an interesting thing that's kind of starting. That, with yeah. When that started with the, and, the franchise, that was, yeah. that hasn't been done in esports no. ever. And it, it pioneered it. Yeah. Now everyone's starting to do franchising league yeah, and course. all that. And, yeah. But they started. Right. And I think too, like, like you said, getting that roster of characters that like everybody's got their favorite Overwatch character. Yeah. That knows everyone Overwatch. likes it. Yeah. You know, or like you may not even be good with that person. You're like, I think Genji's really cool. I suck with him, but like, I want to try to use him. And it's like, don't use Genji. You suck at Genji. It's like, I'm sorry. (laughs) I like he's a ninja. Um, I do think Overwatch definitely deserves to be in that consideration of like, it did something amazing. It's still doing something. It it did something. I wouldn't say it did something different. It made something that existed and made it better. It did it better than anyone's done it before. Nothing different, better. And that's what we're looking for is something better. Now I want to talk about multiplayer games. And it's a game okay. that I don't think you and I even like, but you can't not talk about it because it took the world by storm and it still does. And it's Fortnite. Yeah, we don't. I don't like Fortnite. But I don't either. You, but you, you can't. You can't but, deny hey, it. We, I got to tell you something else. <laughs> it still says early access, Jake. I know it does. Oh, so, it has so early can access. we talk about it? Even oh, though it's in damn, oh. that's gonna be a. It's this still in early access. It's number one game. All, number one How game. Was that basically. game still in early access? It came out three years ago. Uh, they actually, I, I don't think they'll ever get out early access. It is one of those things that is just ingrained with it. And the way they're incorporate, they're, they're still developing on the fly. And they're incorporating other IP into yep. the game as we speak. And it just, it's going to keep building. It's just going to keep growing and growing and updating and updating. And that's what they do. Yeah. I don't think it could ever come out as a full game. That, that's oh. just my opinion. So I, I, we, that's why I was like, what's the debate on that? It's definitely... Know does not feel like an early access game. No. It, it feels is, like they have that title. It, it's like it's as much blanket. as Apex Legends released. Yep. It is It is like, Ape, you know. Right. Or H1Z1, all those battle BR games. That's not what we talk about, H1Z1, but <laughs> but um, it's spawning all these BR games. But right. anyways, uh, Fortnite, it's, you know, it's, it's Fortnite. not my game. It's, it's not my type of game. I mean, I like it's PUBG It's kids' for a favorite bit. games, but... um. But it's taken the world by storm. I mean, it's so big that it has DC characters in it, DC Comics yeah. characters, Marvel characters, Star Wars. Like, it's got the if biggest I, IPs if on the you, planet. If you have, like, a list of what the criteria is for a game of the decade, it checks off probably, like, two boxes. Multiplayer and uh, popularity. Yep. I don't see the art in it. I don't see the music oh, score in it. No. Um, animation's awful. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's, uh, it's not a pretty game to look at. It's just repetitive... Same thing over and over, but it just it did take the world by storm, and it yeah. And still, the crazy thing to me is that game was not made as a battle royale game. Exactly, that it, game it, is it's a tower crazy defense. Crazy how became, that 
Yeah, God. yeah. How it, it developed seem... and how it just boomed because I was like, man, there were so many other game, better games that were out. That you had PUBG like out before, and it was that. That's the first one. You had you had uh, a battle Royale, Arma Two mod that basically right. was, was battle royale, and that's how they they that's spawned started. the whole genre. But it's, I you can't say mods are games though because it's just even though it spawns a genre like yeah. Dota, Auto Chess, you can't say that's a game. It's a mod, so you can't be on the game decades. But it did spawn genres that were games. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think and like too like PUBG. I don't think you can say it is a game of the decade, even though it did a no. big thing. That game is so janky, and like yeah. Fortnite just did it better. Like they took what that exactly. game did, and they're like, okay, we're gonna make it for everybody. It's cartoony, kids can play it. And it's still play basically the same game. I mean, obviously, there's differences with. Yeah, PUBG is more get, complex. You can tell but... PUBG is a rushed fucking mess. Yes. Uh, Fortnite is clean and kept getting cleaner and cleaner as they started allocating resources to it. And the community PUBG was just insane. like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have, have you played PUBG it's since huge. it launched? I have played a little bit. It's it's gotten way better. It's it definitely it's has a more. Janky. It has a res- bigger reception in uh, like Asian countries and. Okay. And those type, they have their own type. So, but uh, it's it's still janky. There's still decent issues. Just like H1Z1 still has issues as well. Yeah. And it, people can say Fortnite has issues, but it's just Fortnite is such a cartoonier and simpler game. With PUBG's more going for realistic, right? Especially with shooting and all that. And yeah, I I don't know. Yeah. Competitive, competitive wise, it is also high tier, but it's mm-hmm. not my style. Yeah. Building and me me neither. I'm gonna cross it off, but I think it's a good thing to yeah. talk about. Obviously, Fortnite is. If something crazy. else comes, like if they just keep doing Fortnite forever and ever, something else is gonna come and scoop it up. And that's yeah, well, how you can I already, already see how... Fortnite's popularity is diminishing a little bit. It's not as talked about as much anymore. And then they got Star Wars in it, so who knows? Did yeah, you see J.J. Abrams was like a model in Fortnite? Yes. Yeah. He when like they made, did the that, was really cool. yeah. <laughs> that, that, that stuff is that that those type of events I say are great. Like I've said it before, mm-hmm. IP in games. Especially uh, approaching the gaming community is beautiful. Yeah, and uh, let's see more of it. Yeah, I agree. But Fortnite totally. again, not not our cup of tea. If it's someone else's, yes, they, of course it's good. Right. But uh, decade wise, not for us. All right, throw me another one. Nope. What do you got? Let's go with something smaller, Ooh. but still, I think groundbreaking. Cuphead. Ah, let's get ready for a bout. Cuphead, <laughs> hands down, has the best game score of the decade. I say, wow! Out of what it like the music and the way it ties in with the animation and that old style, it is great. Hit hit the nail like I always say, hit the nail around the head. Like it's just perfect, yes. perfect. What how you do the fights and it's not all the same. You play the mm-hmm. same level over and over again. It's not the same. Different solos, different little ass. Even though it has like the same like background, like jazz is so great. I like, could do yeah. that, but uh. It really hit the nail, and then let's talk about like the hand drawn animation. The art style is beautiful. The art style, like taking it back, basically taking it back to the fifties, forties, like the, that old hand drawn cell animation, mm-hmm. making it into a game and a hard game at that. Like not just so some hard. easy, game, like this, uh, a hard like Dark Souls level type game. Did you ever beat with... it? No, no, me neither. Play through it. <laughs> I said okay. we stopped at the dragon, right? Oh, I got past the dragon. Okay, I saw the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and anyways, but uh, difficulty wise, and then the just the level sophistication with the levels, mm-hmm. like how you go through them and how you fight bosses and learning the, and just the the sound and style. Even though it's, it's an indie game, it's simpler than most of these games. I think it spawned its own genre. Yeah. I think they, this company can really go to the next level and keep this style and try a different type of game, but keep that uh that cell shade animation with hand drawn. Mm-hmm. Uh, animators doing that work, even though it's a lot of time and effort, it shows how great it, it looks. Right. Yeah, and, and Cuphead is something it. that's I think very special. I don't know if it's for me. I don't know if it ranks up with games like God of War, Skyrim. And that's why I feel like there should be like different genres because an indie yeah. game, especially an indie company, can never compete with AAA. Technically, it's not indie. It's published you, by Microsoft. How, but it it was made. You can't say a publish publisher is making the game. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, it was made by the amount. The, but, yeah, the amount of effort is is, is it indicates. Yeah, just like uh, I'm pretty sure Microsoft, yeah, Devolver, Devolver, Devolver Digital, <laughs> and all those other games that are like giving them the money to. Yeah, I mean, but they they but took the effort first. Yeah, yeah. They they've been working on this game forever. Like it was, it was like so much time, and then when they came out with something like the earlier, like shows of the game, it's like it's it was different. 
but <laughs> it was like, oh man, this looks great. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna give you the money now to finish it yeah. up. That's what it took. And a lot of games have that. I'm writing Cuphead down. That's a good one to have on there. I'll circle that. We'll come back to it. I like that yeah. idea. Yeah, list wise, right. I think it should be on there. I want to talk about a better. I want, in my opinion, the best indie game of the decade. It's Journey. Okay. I wouldn't say that, but I can say, say that is. Good. Oh, I think, no. in my opinion, Journey is the best gaming indie game of the decade. Just Journey how simple is, Journey is, and how it's a wasteland and, that you walk through. It, it's, I mean, it's a desert you walk through, basically. But it, you, yeah, you but do have a good story aspects, and I, I don't, it, I don't see it though. Wasn't jiving for you. It, okay. it did not jive with me. I recommend it. it. Is if you haven't played game. Journey, it's a, it's a good game to play. It's a two-hour experience that is out on PC as well. Is it on PC? Yeah, they came out on Epic Store. Yeah, they're releasing a lot of PlayStation games on PC. I don't yeah. know what happened. What are they? Like the Beyond Two Souls and all those. Oh yeah, yeah. Epic yeah. Games, yeah. I'm gonna cross out Journey then, but I like Journey. I think it's a great game. Very it. beautiful, very pretty. Um, you're up next. Stardew Valley. That uh, is the number one, number one value, and then it's not your type of game. So let's talk it's about not that. at all. You don't I like have, farming? I have bought Stardew Valley uh-huh. on PlayStation, Steam, and Switch. Why? <laughs> uh, well, I think you may have bought it for me on Steam, actually, but that's beside the point. Oh, okay. Because um, I thought maybe, like, handheld-wise, this would be a better game for me. Like, I would get in the zone of kind of, like, playing it portably while watching a movie or something. It's just Stardew Valley as, like, the, what is it, um, Harvest Moon, right? That's what it's kind of based yeah, on. Harvest Moon, yeah, kind of like Harvest Moon. Owning a farm and managing it and stuff while going and kind of doing role-playing-based activities. Yeah, fishing, mining, fighting in caverns it was just a little too slow for me and like okay a little obtuse where i was like it's not like i like a game that kind of holds my hand a little bit okay. um and kind of like i i understand what i'm trying to do where like i feel like with stardew i'm kind of a dumb guy so i was like what am i doing am i want to i want to own a cow and it's like clean out these rocks and i was like i don't want to clean rocks right now give me a cow so gotcha, gotcha. for me yeah so you, you didn't like what you needed to do certain things to together yeah, I, I guess so. That. <laughs> okay, so yeah, talk that, about Stardew. That, that, okay, yeah, so I, I, yeah, I beat Stardew, but uh, I haven't played it since the recent updates, which have been fantastic from what I heard. There's multiplayer, which is why oh. I wanted to like play. Like Maybe we could play together, maybe we can do okay. some stuff with my yeah. knowledge of the game. There you go. But uh, yeah, there are certain things, like you can't cross over this one bridge unless you do this certain thing, or there's limited time in the day, which is, I think that's the key aspect of the game. Like You can only get certain stuff done between the day, and right. when nighttime hits, you just fall over and sleep, and then someone drags you to your home and you lose money or something like that. But uh, you have to really time manage it, like your activities, what you need okay. to do. And uh, but then it's addicting because it's just like, okay, I couldn't get this stuff done in that day. Now I have to do the next day and then right. do all my activity, and then you just keep playing forever. And then just like eight hours just went by, <laughs> and uh, you're farming and stuff, and yeah. <laughs> trying to get this, get trying to get these minerals, trying to sell them, trying to buy the seed, and. The goal of the game, though, is to kind of repair the uh, the community center mm-hmm. with the what is it they call it? Jubilees, and I can't remember the name. The little little like spirits, and you have to like get all this stuff in certain seasons. Like in spring, you need like these certain items, either like a fish or some wheat, and you put it all in the community center. And then like, okay, you got that done. Now next season, you need to grow this stuff in winter and do this. So you got to prepare for the season. And that, that's how the game is like. And then once you have all of those items and all of that. Then you complete the community center and you beat the game. Basically, you kind of beat huh. the game. You, you can keep do it in playing like, afterwards. And there's like two years of game time, like it usually takes. Huh. But you can, but yeah, you can keep playing it and keep developing and clearing out your plot of land, trying to get rid of those big boulders that you can't break or trees and. Those goddamn it just big keeps boulders. Building, it building. And if you like fishing in games, I has a great fishing. That's great I fishing. Like fishing. It's peaceful. It's a relaxing game. Uh, I think for the guy who developed it. Uh, I forget his yeah, name. One, one man team. Concerned Ape, what's his name? Something Ape. Okay. Concerned Ape. I think I think it's Concerned Ape. But mm. he won me yeah, at one man team doing all that work, and yeah. he's still doing he's still doing the updates. Yeah. Across many systems, I think he has some help now. But and he's also doing another project. He's also working. He's like. Well, you heard what getting... the rumor for that project is, right? No. What? The rumor for like the sequel to Stardew is the wizard guy that's in the tower. Oh yeah. He's yeah, yeah, making like game. a wizard school based game, like a Hogwartsy yes. kind of deal. Yeah, so basically, one man army for a great indie game that has yep. all the aspects of someone like Harvest Moon, which I did, and all, all these other elements tied into it. it. Not no, not so much on the story. I think it's up there for a great indie game. Yeah, not my indie game. Of the nope. decade, though I, I think I we probably have the same. Yeah, indie yeah, game of the yeah, yeah. 
Um, which I think maybe we should wait till the end because I think that yes, the game we're both thinking of is probably the game yeah. of the decade. Um, I want to talk about a uh, game that kind of changed genres a little bit. The okay. sequel to Demon Souls, Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Yeah, that you have to talk about Dark Souls. I've never played the first Dark Souls, but we all know oh, what Souls there's games. A, there's are. a remaster if you do want to play it. Yeah. It's on the Switch if you really want to. <laughs> I would never play it on the Switch. Um, but I think obviously that's a game that everyone should talk about. I mean, it constructed a genre of kind of old schooly, kind of hard, difficult games that it's all about learning the puzzle of the enemy you're fighting. And Dark Souls really took that to the next level and made it more widespread because Demon Souls was such a small project. Um, so I think Dark Souls is definitely a game that should be talked about. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, people would say Demon Souls is like the first of the franchise, mm-hmm. but not a lot of people played it. Yeah. I would say Dark Souls is the first of the franchise. It is different and it does its thing and people love what it does. I don't personally. It's it's like head banging, but uh, it's difficult and it's scary, <laughs> mm-hmm. but it's definitely laid down the foundation for from software being one of the top best. companies right best, yeah probably the best japanese company game company oh yeah besides, besides nintendo stuff but as like a software <laughs> well, game company. and i think dark souls did something which obviously we're going to talk about our game of the year next week but jedi fallen order is one of mine um yep and kind of the the risk reward system that that game kind of borrows from dark souls but dark heavily souls, heavily influenced dark souls does i think a lot better where you yeah and I know this from Bloodborne, I know the system kind of carries over, but you have your souls that you're collecting from killing an enemy. Yeah. And they're like, right. okay, I found this little rest spot, but I can go kill two more enemies and I can get more of these souls upgraded. Then like you die, you lose them. You have to go back to like, try to get to that point. And I yep. think like that risk reward system of dark souls kind of has influenced a lot of games to get to that point. That's like star Wars borrowed yeah. from dark souls. Like, Neo is also influenced by dark souls. Yeah. Another, uh, Similar type game, but it has definitely elements. The only thing is, uh, Jedi Fallen Order had like a little uh, simpler, I'd say. Oh yeah. You still had like you still had the bonfires, but you didn't have like the heavy like upgrade of different builds that you can do. No. You, you were locked in pretty well, which is fine. Yeah, uh, it had like but, light bo- dark but yeah, souls, bloodborne light elements. Effects. But that when you have another game using your elements, that's just a testament to how good your elements are. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Like and it's fun similar... other games like Bloodborne, which is I think yeah. one of the, one of the games of the decade is Bloodborne, just for how interesting that game is. But yeah. The, but I think Dark Souls obviously usurps it. And then yeah. you have Sekiro that just won Game of the Year at the Game Awards. So you have this genre that was kind of spawned from this. You you have a a kind of line that From Software can just stem off of. Mm-hmm. And Dark Souls is at you know is at the very beginning. Yeah. You people say Demon Souls, but again, it, it wasn't popular enough. Dark Souls really propelled them yeah. where they are today so yeah definitely up there for game of the decade in terms of i'm circling john it. john responding all right you're up what do you got for me okay uh let's do a smaller game actually okay. no let's, let's do a big game let's do like a really big game yeah league of legends wow did that come out this decade yes it did oh Look, i think it came out 2010 2011 okay it was in it was in beta for a long time so it was in definitely right. in beta in 2010 2011 i know it's 2011 because i was in high school okay <laughs> but uh uh really took off around 2012 i believe right and then from then on rest is history it's probably number one moba of all time even though it spawned off of dota and which spawned off of warcraft 3 you know, again like all these spawning yeah. spawning but as what a moba like in a genre it propelled it you I had dota the- 2 you had so many I have nothing to say on this game, but I respect all of your opinions. You <laughs> have nothing. I have all the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> it is a interesting game. Okay, so everyone hasn't played it. It's basically uh, you have minion waves that go, and you're basically trying to kill towers until you get to their base and kill their crystal. But there's three lanes, so you go through these three lanes, and you're fighting in these lanes until you can like kill the team's towers and uh, get kills. Like basically, and they you have unique heroes. Basically, they have special abilities. Mm-hmm. Similar to Overwatch, except top-down God View type uh, game. Right. And there's builds, items that affect your health, mana, uh, attack power, attack speed, like all these little elements uh, that are in older games. Like you know, if you played a Warcraft MMORPG kind of game, mm. that's basically in a MOBA battle arena type game. Right. And this one stemmed off of Dota, basically like its own type of thing, and did things a lot of simpler. 
Which again, simplicity appeals to the masses. Yep. It's how you got people to get into it. People weren't playing Dota because it was a mod, and some people did, and then you had uh, other games. Man, I can't try to remember. Han, Heroes of New Earth. That was another MOBA around that time. If Heroes of the Storm Uh, now, that's kind of big. Here's the storm. Yeah, exactly. So you have all these other ones that spawn. And there's there's probably a bunch that I don't remember that spawn off of MOBA types. Yeah. But League, people would say League is at the forefront. And game of the decade? No. No. But, but, but I think it is for wise, a lot of people. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. Like, it was, number no one, it was number one for a long time. Yeah, I mean, it, it still yeah, is. Fortnite is so now, big. But, yeah. So yeah. I think that's definitely one to be talked about. But it's for me, I've yeah. it's not my type of game. And I've watched... You know, my roommate play it once. Back it, in the day. it is it is a one thing it, again, like Fortnite. It's one thing that does something well is multiplayer. Yeah, and it was sometimes it was buggy, and sometimes there was like a lot of stuff, but it was fun. Definitely played a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Um, played more Dota two because that was I felt a little bit better. It once basically is like a stepping stone. Dota two I feel is more complex. Gotcha. Than what you could do, but definitely not approachable. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what most of these games are like. You have to have experience somewhere. Yeah. To play it. Um. But definitely want to bring it up because it definitely came out this decade. He there you go. Beta, but... uh, something I want to talk about, kind of you talked about genre defining games. Pokemon Go. No, fuck that game. <laughs> <laughs> it was good like the first two weeks. And even then... Well, there you go. Fuck it. It's all <laughs> no, <laughs> mo- like mobile games. Like, God damn it. But, but it did do uh, something that kind of took the world by storm. And Yes. No, in the first sucks. two I weeks, agree. I would agree. Oh, I don't like. I don't play it anymore. But in the first two weeks, it was the best game of all time, and then it <laughs> just fuck it. It's dead. <laughs> all right. Well, fair enough. You went done. We're done talking about it. Don't even mention it anymore. Yeah. No. Um, I let, let, let's do. Let's do. Let's talk about it. No, nah, we don't talk okay. much about it. Everybody knows a little what bit. Pokemon Go is. Games that like have you go out in the real world and interact with it, and that is cool. Yeah. But. uh... When you monet when when you're in a mobile atmosphere, you have to monetize every little goddamn thing That's and like sucks. make everything repetitive and wait time and like oh to do this. I hate those types of games. Yep. People love them like oh I'll play this game forever. Like infinite like yeah, just continue in, infinite progression games. Fuck infinite progression games. I don't like games that end. don't respect my time, and I I do feel like Pokemon yeah, exactly. Go is a little bit like that. Um, yeah. That being said, I just think it kind of created a cultural wave. Like people died while playing Pokemon Go because they walked off cliffs. Like. It's games like yeah. that are like insane. Like okay, and obviously like bars were putting out signs that, like there are no yeah. Pokemon here. Like hey. do not come to our Pokemon place. Like yeah, there was like a strong wave of people hanging around, but it got people like going to those areas. It yeah. got people outside, which is is great in the summer. And then it was like it would go offline. And it was like okay, I can't do this shit. And then once it recovered, it was gone. Right. It was a good craze in, in that summer. People still play it, um, which I think is really funny. Yeah, but- people play it, and it's like okay. All right, so I've got about two other games to talk about. Where are you okay. at on your list? How many do you have? Uh, I got six. Okay, I can, okay. let's let's rapid fire through through. Yeah, you rapid fire. I like through actually, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna talk about two. Of them. Okay. <laughs> uh, actually, no, I'll I'll cross out four. Portal two. Oh, wow. Let's talk about Portal two. Portal two. Cool. That was on my list. Yep. All right. Okay. Portal two. What a great game. What Boom. an amazing Done. game. What a, a crazy step up from Portal 1. Yep. Which to me is uh, just like a mod off of yeah, Half-Life. It yeah. basically is. It's, but it's just a source engine game. And when you're getting through it, it's just puzzle solving. And at the very end, it just takes like a sharp right turn and turns you on your head and mm-hmm. all these ethical and like all these decisions just come to your head and you're like, Jesus Christ, what the hell have I been playing? I thought I was just like playing. Like and it really spawned two which took it even beyond with right. co-op. Amazing. Oh, yeah. probably, probably some of the best co-op. I forget out about co-op with that game. Beautiful. And yeah. its own story too. Co-op has its own story. So yep. even with, with the thing, it's, it's great. And you have attachment to the main story too. So it, it, there's two things to that game. And in terms of valve games, of course, you know, Valve makes great games. Yep. This one is genre wise. Great. It takes place yeah. in the half-life universe, but it's its own thing. And it's, Funny, witty. It's a great, great puzzle game. Great with like puzzle. Amazing great humor. puzzles. Yeah. Great puzzles using great physics and oh, it's just. Well, like yeah. you said, I think like you know, Portal Two took Portal One, and really just expanded everything that did. It's like yep. we're gonna make this game even funnier. We're gonna make the puzzles not just like in the rooms. Like eventually, you're gonna get out of like the puzzle-based yeah. system and like yeah, get out of see it. See yep. more of the work of Aperture, and then of course, like anything, I love when the bad guy from the first game has to become like a good guy. 
and yep. getting Gladys like as like kind of your companion that talked to you yeah, about yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, getting Gladys to help you is <laughs> hilarious. Like it's got yeah. that line where she's like, "And it's okay because I'm a potato," and you're like, "This is the most <laughs> ridiculous thing." But then you also have J.K. Simmons, who's an amazing actor. Oh, Simmons is so good. Simmons is great in that game as like the you know head guy of Aperture, and he does all the yeah like instructional. I just yeah, and the yeah. Mo- the be- the most famous the the lemons. Yep. How dare you give me lemons? <laughs> and Simmons like. Take those lemons and make a flamethrower and burn them. <laughs> like, really great, funny, witty line. Yeah. And then the, there's a really... Okay, there's this water bottle that they make. And it says... Uh, it's it's not it's not part of the game. This is what the okay. coral like spawn. But there's a water bottle that I think... I don't know if Ted had it. One of our friends, Ted. Uh, it says, like, dihydrogen monoxide. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's just water. H2O. Yeah. H2O. And it says, like, may cause... Like, it has all these symptoms on it. And it's, like, such a great thing because, like, you look at it and be like, oh, crap, this this, this causes that? It's dangerous. But it's just, it's just like, no, I mean, it's just a fancy way of saying water, which what it does yeah. is like really, really witty. And definitely you could see it has careful uh, storytelling aspects, mm-hmm. environment aspects. Um, Very sad that there's not another one, even though the way two ends is kind of like is done. Yeah, I think it's done. However, I do want to talk about this now. I'll talk about it later, but how I felt Half-Life 3 could have been is they could have joined. That's what team. I think a lot of people thought yeah. it was going to be. It could have joined them. Yep. yep. You could have had the portal gun and the, uh, you know. The gravity other, gun. Gravi- gravity gun. Yep. Oh my God. Dual wield in both of those. Yeah. But you could have had, uh, God, man, I can't remember her name. Steph? Oh, the main girl from it? Shell. 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 You could have Shell meet up with Freeman or like have her be G. Like, uh, there could have been some really crazy stuff there. But uh, yeah, again, Valve just kind of went. Yeah. But now they're coming back up, and maybe these VR games again. We need to talk about VR games at another date. Yeah, uh, probably soon when Half Life comes out, and I'll express my opinion. You'll express yours, and yeah, I think Half Life. Personally, just a really quick day. I think it's still too overpriced, but we'll see. Yes, I would agree. It's yeah, it's very expensive. Um, I think yep. Portal Two is great. One of my like favorite games. I think it was my honorable mentions last week. I don't know if it competes with a lot of these games on the list. Does it doesn't compete whatsoever? But you do got to talk about it in yeah, terms of. Course. of just it didn't define any genres it did its own thing mm-hmm. but it's uh really has a good strong people know about it people right play and it. it's an amazing game i definitely would agree yeah. um a game that i went on a i mean like 30 minute tirade about last week breath of the wild it's got to be on there it's got to be in breath of the wild has to be on there. Yeah. it's one of the greatest open world games of all time maybe the best and it's mm-hmm. just fantastic legend of zelda it's great i went on and talked about it a lot but i think We'll move on from it and we'll come back to it. Because I think that's a game that it'd be fun to kind of dissect. Do you let's, have any others about, on your list? Yeah, let's talk about this. I basically like crossed everything else out because I feel like there, you could talk about it, but we're, we're getting into like in the, the decade. I feel like yeah. this one, which we talked about last week, should. Well, we, we didn't talk about it last week, but we talked about offline last mm-hmm. week. Minecraft. 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 Now, people are going to say, wait, to was Minecraft released in this decade? Yes, its official yes, it release was. date was 2011. Yep. Two years official. after. It was in alpha. I played it. I think I played in alpha. I played in beta. Yep. Uh, and it came, it released. So yep. we, we have to talk about that. We, we, we said it before. If it released this, it deserves to be on there. Mm-hmm. It's not on most people's decade game list, but I would say it, it should needs to be. Because yeah. this game spawned so many other games. It is the true, like, mod build this build a game off of this game game you know there's so many yeah. different mods that were in that game and style and the effort again one guy mm-hmm. doing everything sold uh, for two billion dollars <laughs> who's now a billionaire yep. and he still coats he still does his own thing i watch his twitter hmm. notch yeah um but i want to talk about the other game that goes along with it oh. i would say i would say it's a different it's a different aspect of, to it and that is, we'll, we'll go back to Minecraft, but I want to talk about Terraria. Oh, okay. How Terraria. do you feel about Terraria? I have never played Terraria. Oh! Let's play. <laughs> you like Minecraft? Uh, so I started a Terraria game with you once, but it was in like someone else's game, and I was so lost, and I was like, this is not fun. I you think probably I like, play like with a bunch of us. You, you know what? Like, uh, eventually, yeah, we probably, yeah, we probably yeah. joined it, but none of our friends like it. Yeah. They, they all hate it, and I love it. it there's... So what it does differently, it has the same like you know mining aspect and building houses and all that, mm-hmm. but it has a bunch of bosses. 
Okay. Not just the one, el- like, the dragon. The ender fight, dragon. Ender yeah. But it has a bunch to progress to different aspects, and it changes the world, and it- it's really fun. Okay. So if you like to, like, fight bosses and gear up and explore, it's great. It's a great game. It's way simpler, but again, heavily influenced by Minecraft. Right. And I think I want to go yeah, back yeah. to Minecraft, because I think against Terraria, I think Minecraft beats it out. Oh, of course. Opinion. But I would just say, yeah. like, this is a, Minecraft is a game that spawned games. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I think Minecraft is... Genre. We've talked a lot about these do anything kind of games that really this is this generation, yeah. this decade's kind of thing. Minecraft was one of those that's just like you want to be a survival game, that's what this is. You want to be yep. a like hunting game, that's what this is. You want to build a giant mansion that influences a waterfall that does this, that's what this game is. You yep. want to recreate Helm's Deep from Lord of the Rings? Yes. You can do yes, that. Yes. And people did it. I mean, people built New York City, like an entire replica yeah. of New York City and it's amazing what you Minecraft. Could, you could build a computer into it. Like there, there were so yes. many little things you could you could do all these elements in it. And it, you could say, "Are you?" It's a game engine, but no, it's a game. It's a game that has the aspects of basically building other stuff. You could build games in the game. Yeah, that's that's a game. And then uh, one more thing. Yeah, Stardew Valley shares a lot of aspects that were in Minecraft. Mm-hmm. The way items drop and you collect them, like they they go to your body. That that wasn't around. Yeah, when the, you can break something and it becomes smaller, and you walk over and it goes to your your inventory, completely new. That that was not around. Hmm. That was something unique to Minecraft. That's so funny because now think about games now. Every game yeah. does that. Yeah, every game does <laughs> that. But yeah, yeah. But collecting items and breaking stuff to collect items that that was unique to. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you chopping down wood with your bare hands, like all that. Yep, stuff. right. You're punching a tree to break it. Yes, it's, you can look back. No games to it. A game that's beautifully silly. Um, and just creative peaceful. as hell and peaceful, peaceful. If you want it to be, if you don't want it to be, it can be hard as hell. I mean, I think I just think about all the times that I've like you know, built houses with friends and then like accidentally burned yeah. the house down and the game auto saves right when you burn the house down. You're like, I'm so sorry. Like I didn't mean to do this and or dying to creepers. It's not yeah, like oh the, the frustration, the scariness, the or like, I'm going to be really into farming, lava. you know, like that's all I got into was like really into farming and I, yeah, exactly. It's a game that I think everyone knows. I think everyone's played at one point. It's used in schools now. I mean, it's nuts how yeah. Minecraft. Micro, Microsoft owned it. It, it. You know, you, when you say your game is basically bought for billions, yeah. that is, I feel like a game of well, game of the decade. And Microsoft is Microsoft bought Minecraft obviously for two billion dollars. Minecraft is so big that they're like, it's not an exclusive game. Like we know we bought this IP, but like Minecraft is for everybody, and like they still support yeah. it on PlayStation, their biggest competitor. Like, I think that's, they could have easily done a Minecraft 2 that was exclusive to Xbox and everybody bought an Xbox for it. They're like, no, it's, it is bigger than us. And that's pretty crazy. You know? Yeah. And I think that the mod support for it is insane as well. I played yeah. many mods and then you had companies that were small off it, which is <laughs> thing like, you know, you have Yogscast that was like a YouTube kind of company, but where they make mods, there's, there's companies that make, they have like private servers that people can play on it and pay for it like it, the skins are luckily are definitely you don't have to pay for so there's yeah. no money there but but uh server wise and just going in being creative like it's a canvas basically yeah. open canvas and well and i mean achievement hunter like their big thing was that minecraft oh, series for so yes, long yes my Minecraft that was a huge series yeah, for yeah. Achievement hunter. i mean um, ray left because of it but hey yeah. we're not gonna talk about that <laughs> so talk about that i know but uh, it's, it's a game that i think definitely took the world by storm and it still has it i think there's still popularity with kids and even adults love it i mean yeah i think more people know about minecraft than fortnite i would say that yeah maybe maybe not i don't know it's hard now but that is so hard now but but, you know two years old one's 10 exactly that's why i don't know but we'll see how they hold up 10 years from now if fortnite is still blazing out there for kids forever like pokemon or something i don't know yeah right fortnite too (laughs) um but yeah but i think minecraft is obviously the game that's really do you have any do you have any more stuff to talk about because i think we're ready to make i i think that was kind of my the big one i wanted to talk about yeah so okay i want to go through the ones that we kind of circled okay okay here's the ones we talked about we circled talked about god of war from 2018 yep breath of the wild legend of zelda breath of the wild gta 5 skyrim the last of us Minecraft, Overwatch, Dark Souls, Cuphead, 
Stardew. Those are the ones we circled. Of all the all the ones we talked about. Uh how you said it, most of those are almost in that order. <laughs> yeah. But um what should we put let, let's do top five. Let's narrow it top down five. top five. Okay. So I wanna go uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna eliminate Stardew. Yep. I was I'm gonna eliminate I'm gonna eliminate Cuphead sadly. I'm taking out Cuphead. I'm taking those two down. Yeah, this is, now we're getting tough. Now we're really tough. Seven. Overwatch. Let's get rid of Overwatch. Sorry. Get rid of Overwatch. Okay. I think you get rid of Dark Souls. Get rid of Dark uh, Souls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that? Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six. I'm games. at six. I'm at six. So we gotta talk about this. Yeah. Woo. So. Wow, good. God six. of War, Breath of the Wild, GTA Five, Last of Us, and Minecraft. Okay, we'll do we'll do top six. That's fine. <laughs> there you go. There's our yeah. top six games of the decade. Is does one stand out above all the rest? Minecraft. Is it Minecraft? I think, I think Minecraft, Minecraft sounds. Like, I think Minecraft sounds. Like, I would do Minecraft, and then I would Last say of Us, Skyrim, Skyrim, and then the the next three. Yeah, yep. would be GTA would probably be last. I would say God of War is last. Okay, maybe. Yeah, maybe God know. of War last. But but I would say yeah, yeah, Minecraft is probably the game of the decade. And I would say follows Minecraft closely by Skyrim. I would say Skyrim is yes number two or three. So yeah, at least we have our top two. We did. We don't we have our, our top, yeah, two. top two. Top two is Minecraft Skyrim. Boom. We did it. That is our game of the decade. <clears throat> High five. Um, yeah. There you go. People are going to love that one. Yeah, uh, that's going to really. <laughs> so there you go. Minecraft's our game of the decade. I think this is probably our longest episode by far because um, my mouth is very dry. Yeah, I, could, I, I was <laughs> trying to. People are going to love that noise. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that was our game of the decade. Thank you so much for watching along. Um, like I said, we will be on every Monday morning. Even though we've never hit a Monday morning, we will try our best. Um, we will. And next week we'll be back with our game of the year discussion, which we're going mm -hmm. to pick an actual game of the year. We'll do kind of a similar format. Games to this. release in the year again. No, no remakes unless no. it was no like remastered. A totally I think game. a remake. Remaster. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No remaster. Remasters. Yeah. Remaster is the word. Yeah. But we will be back with our game of the year. I think that'll be kind of a similar format, and we'll you know come down to one game, not six and everything. So well, thank you so much it's for hard. listening. It is hard. It's very hard. Uh, my name is Jake, this is James, and we are out of here. Have a good night. See you guys.